delighted to have you with us for this. I am the Chair Fiona Harvey. I am the uh, Faculty Lead for Learning Technology in um, Social and Historical Sciences at UCL. I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Eric Shepherd. He's the Executive Director of Talent Transformation. He's an accomplished leader for international businesses and associations focused on talent and assessments and success. Eric has led industry and standards initiatives to promote best practices for assessment, learning and interoperability. And he is a recognised expert in the assessment field and also he's a winner of the eAssessment Association's 2019 Lifetime Contribution Award. So I wanted to share with you an inspirational moment that I had. Um, in my uh, uh, 30 years in the assessment industry, I was involved with doing lots of presentations. And I was doing a presentation in Salt Lake City, and someone said to me, uh, "What's? Uh, can you distinguish competence and competences and skills? When I stepped down from a kind of full-time role and I had time to think and I traveled the world and started developing this thing called the Talent Transformation Pyramid. And it was really trying to put together from a CEO's perspective how uh, competencies are supported and, uh, and, and why there was these kind of two separate tracks in the world of assessment. There was kind of assessment of behaviors and personality and social emotional intelligence. And then there was a, assessments of functional skills and capabilities. Just isolating, now some people would call these soft skills. Uh, some people call them other things. I kind of think that the way we behave is supported by the situation that we're in. So we've been all working from home and that's different than working in an office. It, um, and we behave differently than when we go to see a sports game or when we uh, eat in a fine dining restaurant. So situation impacts our behavior, but then we have the underpinnings of, of who we are, our personality, our desires. So we put this together in this pyramid and in the middle there, there was competencies, which I've circled in red to highlight. And as we went around to uh, organizations, we generally found that on the left-hand side, we saw between five and 15 competencies defined. And then on the right-hand side for capabilities and functional skills, we saw them um, uh, hundreds, uh, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of capabilities and, and technical and functional skills are being defined. So this was another reason there was kind of a discrepancy. You know, on one side, we just had five to 15 behaviors or leadership skills to find the other sides there could be tens or, or hundreds. If we then think, well, the nature of work is changing. So we all know that the pandemic accelerated uh, work from home, but we also see the acceleration of, of the use of drones, of, of using exoskeletons to lift heavy weights and help the disabled, the physically disabled. Um, we see uh, the uh, empathetic robots come in where people are alone and we don't have physical contact, the use of empathetic robots, um, uh, smart devices doing speech recognition. So let's kind of think a bit more about uh, competences. So we know the tasks are going to change. So if the tasks are going to change, the competences we need to uh, perform those tasks are going to be changed, changing. I think we've all seen this, we all know this, but here's one uh, kind of diagrammatic way of representing this where the columns are, are illustrating the competences or the defined competences. And then the depth of each bar is kind of the level of competence. So uh, what, we, what we find is that um, we, we can define it, what a job needs from a level of competence standpoint and competency definitions and we can see what an individual has. And so it's much easier at that level to do a gap analysis. So we can see uh, which of the competencies need to be learned. So our old industrial way of thinking was we'd start on the left, we, we'd go to school, we develop these capabilities and behaviors, which we knew what they were because uh, we'd been, we'd been uh, going from the farm to the factory and, and getting ready for the factory. Uh, for a long time. So we knew what they were. The same with post-secondary education. If we um, exclude research, we just go for post-secondary education. So that was the way it's, it's kind of workplace would receive individuals with certain uh, capabilities and behaviors. And then we'd have to go through an onboarding program. We'd have to teach people about the culture, et cetera. 
But what we're seeing now is kind of the reverse needs to happen and is happening and was happening during uh, the pandemic. Um, so uh, the workplace is now saying, well, for people to be successful um, working in our place, uh, they need to have these capabilities and behaviors. They need to be able to cooperate with people at a distance. They need to be able to communicate. They need to be able to write. They need whatever it is. They So the, the workplace now is taking on a greater responsibility to define these. How do they define them? They define them in competences. So now um, we can think, here's a, a diagram of, of all the people that, or all the stakeholders that kind of involved in this uh, process of, of developing a talent marketplace that is, uh, is, is um, going to be more successful for our society. We have actually got a question. Someone has said, uh, so ESS mm -hmm. have asked, um, to what extent would qualification providers new micro-credential model you describe and what would this entail with regards to regulatory environments? Um, so let me deal with the last pass first. Regulatory uh, uh, will always be the incumbent player that's kind of slow to change. Um, I think that learners uh, will recognize the requirement to be agile and so there is going to be kind of this uh, little bit of conflict there. Um, I think the uh, with e-assessment, especially during the pandemic, that we saw this this huge shift to e-assessment, uh, online proctoring. I think we're going to feel uh, people are going to be comfortable with doing shorter assessments more often. Mm -hmm. And so I think from a, uh, a credentialing organization to break these down into micro credentials that then feed into a credential. Mm -hmm. Now it's easy for me to pontificate that I'm not going to have to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But we do see some countries in the world that are doing it, that are working out how to roll up micro-credentials into credentials mm -hmm. uh, that will will um, kind of enable this more free-flowing uh, free learning and credentialing and, and work. We need to move on now to our first award. So we'll hear from the British Council, from um, Sarah Pearson, who's the uh, Director of Exams for the British Council. And she is going to present the award. So I'm Sarah Pearson, as mentioned, I'm Director of Examinations at the British Council. In any normal year, I'm responsible for the global delivery of around four and a half million exams on paper on computer and online and that's across more than 100 countries worldwide. Uh, the British Council is a proud sponsor of the awards and would like to congratulate all of the finalists nominated from around the world in contributing to making this year's edition more international in nature and in reach than ever before. This year the category was arguably one of the most diverse attracting a variety of projects from multiple sectors and geographies. Hello, I'm Martha Gibson and I'm on the board of the e-assessment association as well as being the sponsorship secretary. This year I'm the chair on the panel for the best international implementation award. What pleased us enormously this year is that the focus is less and less UK centric. The projects were located worldwide but also finalists were made up of global partnerships. So however you look at it, it's truly international and our four finalists demonstrated that in the nature of their partnership working as well as in their projects. In selecting the winner, the judges commented that this was a large and complex implementation that brought together stakeholders from across the world to improve the quality of services that affect people's lives. And so I am very pleased to announce that the winner of the 2021 e-assessment award for the best international implementation is Excelsoft Technology with an assessment solution implemented for exam delivery across Mexico by an Indian company. Congratulations. I feel like we should all just clap. Congratulations to Excel Software. What a wonderful thing to do. And Sarah, thank you very much for um, presenting that for us. We really appreciate your time.